Charlie Sheen is a man with a weenie that he likes to show, but you might know him more for being one of the members in Hollywood Undead, and or the guy wearing the Del Taco bag in the thumbnail for my new Empire Volume 2 review. And recently, that man just put out his debut solo album, only nine months after his bandmate, Johnny Three Tears, released his debut solo album. And I didn't do a review for Johnny's album, because I just never felt like listening to it, and when I finally did, it had been a while, and would have just been pointless to make a review about it, or even just a video in general. And I probably still won't talk about it until I ever get around to reviewing every Hollywood Undead album. But for today, we're going to be talking about Charlie Scene's Outsider, because I definitely have things to say about every song, and especially on the album as a whole. So let's waste no time and get right into this. This is my kingdom. Better give me my crown. Kingdom is a hard-hitting opener to the album, and I had pretty mixed feelings on it when it first came out. I loved everything about the song. Charlie's rapping was solid as usual. The instrumental was really upbeat and heavy. Charlie was even screaming, and it sounded fucking great. And the lyrics in general I could relate to a lot, especially given how it came out around the time that I was writing my song, I Am Not My Feelings, which was a closer track to my album about my insecurities and the song about me choosing to try not to give a fuck anymore. And themes like that play out in the lyrics, with Charlie talking about being abused, but overall coming out of it treating its world like it's its kingdom, and that he is the king. And I ultimately like it a lot. But there was one thing that kind of broke the entire song, and that was the chorus, which sounds ripped straight from Imagine Dragons. So for a while, I just couldn't get through the song because the chorus just completely ruined it for me, but I'll admit that not too long ago I gave the song a couple more listens and I've been kind of getting used to the chorus by now. To me at least, and it could come from the fact that I can relate to the song, it just feels like there's at least more soul put into the writing of it than any Imagine Dragons song, so that alone lets me be able to give Charlie a pass for this one. So other than that, I like it. I wouldn't say it's a strong opener, but I'll get into that when I talk about the album as a whole. But overall, Kingdom's grown on me, and I enjoy it. Also, I don't hear him say better give me my crown. I hear Bay give me my crown, which I like more because it fits more with that whole I'm the king of this world vibe, in my opinion. This is my crown. Break Me Down was honestly my favorite single out of the four. Because of the vocal chops for the most part. <laughs> In general, it's like Kingdom, where it's just got this confident vibe for the insecure folk, and I appreciate that a lot, and it's another one that I can kind of relate to in a way. Basically just whenever I need a somewhat pick-me-up anthem. The complaints I've heard about the song comes from the instrumental, which I can completely admit sounds very dated, but even that datedness comes into play on the reason why I like it. It sounds like a 2014 song, and if you know me, I have heavy nostalgia for 2014. I mean, also besides, War Child and Party While Myself sounded a date as fuck even for its release, so it's not really that much of a big surprise. But yeah, I like the song for that datedness, and just for the lyrics in general. Very simple, but very enjoyable. Also, like, any song that has vocal chops in it will instantly win me over because of them. Oh dear God, make it stop. Act like you're backstage at Tim McGraw. We're all little redneck underneath and all. So fill that cup with baby. I liked the little Tim McGraw when it first came out. The concept of Charlie making a lighthearted, fun country parody song seems very Charlie scene, and at first it seemed to play out really well. At first. I think the comedy's been played out a bit. Yeah, I don't really enjoy the song all that much anymore, to be honest. There's still some funny lyrics here and there, but the overall humor factor just... It's kind of gone. Also, I've been starting to get into country lately, and I mean, I guess it's more country rock than typical country, but this just... I'm sorry, but the hardcore country fans, is this country to you? Because even the original genuine country that I've heard doesn't sound like this. This sounds like a really cheap, uninspired, unknowledgeable attempt at making a hip-hop country type beat to me, and that kind of plays into the ruin of this song for me personally. There's even a song later on the album that sounds more country than this, so I... I I really don't know what this was. I know I sound like I hate it. I don't. I just pretty much lost a damn near all enjoyment from it after the five months it's been out. Hey, good morning. I'd hate to leave without a warning. Good Morning is a more emo-style song, and you'd think with my constant pattern of enjoying old-school emo rock or the occasional nowadays emo rap that I would like this song. Right? Right? Yeah, when this song was released, I felt nothing. Two months later, and I still feel nothing. 
Other than the fact that it doesn't tent for me, uh, I can say that the mix is shit in my opinion. The master is so overcompressed that it forces itself to stand out on the album. Like, like literally, like by volume. One of the times I was listening to this album, I had it on shuffle, and it went from my own worst enemy to this song, and my god. God, was it so much louder than the former, which I, is never really a good thing on an album. I also just don't really like the instrumental on this. The guitar is fine, but then the verse drums just sound really weird, and it's not really my vibe. I guess just overall, I'm terrible at understanding songs. You can't officially judge a song until you know the full detail, and my judgment is just, this song isn't my style, I'm just gonna dismiss it. You know, a real reviewer will go listening to the details of songs, but I don't, or I would understand Charlie's Chorus on Good Morning. <laughs> We've gotten past the singles, and now we're in new territory, starting with Take It From Me, which is a pretty fucking good song. The guitar riff is very emo rap inspired, but unlike the previous song, the drums on here sound pretty hard and nice. The chorus is pretty good. The verses are really good, with Charlie bringing in a more faster flow. And I just like the ending of each line being accented with stereo pan backing vocals. It's a simple trick, but I think that just adds a little bit of energy and emphasis on a line. The lyrics are also pretty relatable for me, especially the bridge. Overall, a pretty fun banger, and I can see why it's Charlie's favorite song on the album. One note I have about the song, uh, the last two lines of the second verse, delivery and maybe rhyme scheme-wise, reminds me of a different song. I initially thought Jarrell's verse on Worth It, but re-listening to that, I don't really see a resemblance. I don't know, it could just be me and my weird way of hearing things. I have a track record of, for some reason, thinking two songs sound similar when they don't in the slightest, so... I could just be entirely wrong, but I thought I'd point it out either way. Alright, and now for the song that I'm, uh, kind of dreading on talking about. Because I like this. Like, a lot. I really dig the guitar riff on here. Charlie's amped up bouncy flow during the verses just gets me so pumped. Charlie's voice when he says... Sounds so different and stress-induced that I really like it. It's an overall song about hating yourself to the point of having suicidal thoughts but not wanting to actually commit suicide, which fucking hell I can relate to a lot. And I like how, like with Bad Flowers Don't Hate Me, Charlie handles the topic in a more fun way. I vibe and turn up so heavily to the song while it's playing. It's easily one of my favorites on the album. But there's one element of the song... You know what? Fuck it. I don't care. I like this part. It's stupid. There's, there isn't anything I can say to defend it or try to, like, say that it's good. But I don't care. I can enjoy it in some weird way. And I love the rest of the track that I'm not going to let this or people's complaints about it ruin the entire thing for me. Also, just in general, I've had this hook stuck in my fucking head since the album came out. Not even just, like, the woohoos, but, like, I've had those stuck, along with the, the entire hook. <laughs> I also can't remember anything from this night, and I may update the script later on. Probably not, because this is, like, my fourth time trying to record this video, and I've kept this part in. Um, but I had a tall glass of water and listened to this album one night, and I found the woohoos so enjoyable. <laughs> They just sound so cartoony in an overall fun, hyped-up song about hating yourself. I, I kind of like those tone combinations. Plus, Charlie saying get you is so stupid. I love it. I find it so funny. I get so much joy from this. Save me from myself. Save me from myself is a weird one for me. The lyrics are about being self-destructive, which is something I can relate to. I think the instrumental has some potential here and there, but overall, I just... I think it just kind of sounds like a mess. During the chorus, there's this combination of electric guitar and what honestly sounds like MIDI horns, and it sounds so off. And then I realized that it literally sounds like something I would create. So after that realization, I don't really mind it so much, but honestly, my biggest gripe with the song is that Charlie sounds kind of offbeat during the verses, which is really weird and off-putting when this guy's usually really fucking good at rapping, and his flow on here is relatively slow, but it feels like it's just dragging through mud trying to catch up with itself every now and then, and it honestly just puts me out of it. Not really a fan of the lyrics on this one either. Charlie goes on a thing about just 
ordering a drink and claims it as wisdom. And then he repeats the final two lines, but removes half of the first line, and it ends up just sounding really awkward, because now there's just dead space doing nothing. Yeah, just overall, not a fan, and it's seeming like it's becoming one of those songs that gets worse with every listen, so I will probably refrain myself from any more listens. Alright, we're back to the relatable songs, and this one's honestly one of my favorites from the album. I love the vibe on this. It's got such this, like, rainy vibe, like, sitting on your bed next to your window while it's raining. Like, that's basically my childhood growing up in Washington. And I heard this on my way home from work, and it just got me in this vibe where I just stared at the window and felt reminiscent. Thank God I wasn't the one driving. But what I love more than the vibe of this song is those fucking choir vocals during the chorus. My God, they sound so good. The second verse, while being short, is probably the most relatable part of the song for me, but the opening to the third verse is also pretty heavy-hitting. I find when I relate to a song, I end up having the least things to say about it, because it's honestly just pretty hard to put into detail how music would make you relate emotionally. Or at least I find it to be pretty hard. But yeah, love the song. Good vibes all around. Okay, you want to talk about relatable. God, this song is beautiful. The pianos, the acoustic guitars, and the lyrics. Oh my fucking god, the lyrics resonate so hard with me. The chorus, the verse, even the fucking pre-chorus, and that bridge. My god, that bridge makes me want to cry just reading it. This song feels like my own emotions that I've been feeling for the past few months, and then just throws in lyrics that I can relate to different personal things that I've had happen in my life just late, lately. I, 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 I know this is a quick segment, but god damn, this song was just fucking amazing. In the mouth of madness, through the okay, well, somehow the album is continuing. Um, again, I'll talk about that more towards the end of the video, but... This one is uh, a whole ass definition of a mixed bag. The song opens up with a really nice, calm vibe, which is alright. It sounds nice, but it also kind of feels a bit too folk pop for my liking, but not bad. Uh, and then we transition into the verse, and I think it transitions well, for the most part. And, and this part actually grabs my attention, because Charlie is on his Eminem shit, and I find a lot of hype in that. Then Charlie's vocal delivery starts getting angrier, and then he's screaming, and the entire time this is happening... Just not feeling it. Because I'm yearning for some guitar. I think Charlie's delivery on this verse would sound fucking amazing with some heavy metal guitars going on in the forefront of the instrumental. And on my first listen, I was just sitting there waiting for them to kick in. And then the chorus kicks in, and it's the fucking intro. And it doesn't do anything to transition into it. It's just a straight-up hard cut. And now look... Calm and Heavy can work together beautifully, a lot of rock songs does and a lot of songs I like do it. But this straight up just feels like two completely different songs thrown together, and it's so jarring when they switch between each other. And again, why no guitars? That's the thing I want the fucking most, it's a fucking guitar- You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I'll, I'll do it myself. I know it doesn't sound the greatest. I honestly really only spent about half an hour on it and wasn't trying to make something perfect. Just a basic example of what I was kind of wanting. And I hope by that example you can understand just kind of what I fucking want from this song. But yeah, uh, the fact that the comp part is the actual chorus is fucking baffling. If, if anything, it should have just been a nice soft intro and like maybe an outro. And if you want a really good example of a song that's able to go from something really calm and nice to something really energetic and heavy hitting, listen to Fade to Black by Metallica. I know it's a basic example of something like that, but it's a very fucking good one. And personally, given the lyrical topic of the verse and the bridge, I think the entire song should have just been heavy and angry because even the lyrics and the chorus don't sound like they fit in with the song. This is just something really weird and honestly kind of saddening because I can see so much potential in it. I'm on the outside, I'm on the outside 
And now we're at the closing track. The song that I referenced in Little Tim McGraw. And although it's more cowboy western sounding, I think the instrumental is a pretty nice vibe. And if it's with the theme of being an outsider or what the lyrics say, a nomad. But my problem with the song goes straight to the lyrics again. Uh, this just isn't really something I'm vibing with, to be honest. And it's mostly because of the chorus. The verses are completely fine, but the chorus and pre-chorus just don't hit for me. And there's something unexplainable about them that make me just not really like listening to them. Especially the part in the chorus where he says, If I go to war with myself, if I go to war with myself. Because it feels off, personally. Like, when you start a sentence with if... There's a second half that resolves as a question, and if the second half of the sentence starts with an if, then that's because the first half was a result of whatever that if is. But here, there's nothing in that chorus that I can find that would fit, or at least make sense. All I can see is Charlie saying that he's going to be on the outside looking in if he goes to war with himself, which doesn't really all make that much sense. Or maybe it does, and I'm just dumb i mean i genuinely curious about that if if you have any interpretations on how that's supposed to mean then gladly leave them in the comment section i really do want to know what this could possibly mean i mean i guess i could see it in a way of like if he's in his head then he can get reflective i don't uh, maybe maybe that's it i, I don't know Anyways, it's a pretty weak closer, which is a perfect jumping point on my uh, biggest thoughts with the album. Charlie Scene has got a weenie that he loves to show it everywhere. We would never let a female in our group. That would take away from our credibility, and we would be a gay band. This album is kind of messy. And the track list doesn't help it. It was already weird that the first four songs were singles, but released in a different order than they are on the track list. But it's baffling how the ghost isn't the closer of the album. The song, that literally sounds like an album closer, is the third to last track on the album. What the fuck was this decision? And also, the ghost makes some pretty decent callbacks to Good Morning, so wouldn't it make a bit of sense to make Good Morning the opening and then the ghost the closing? Also, why is little Tim McGraw even on here? Every other song in the album is about emotions and mental struggling, and then there's just this country parody song that feels so out of place thematically. And honestly, just in general, with most of the songs on here being Charlie just dragging himself through the mud and the emotions, the confidence anthems like Kingdom and Can't Break Me Down feel a bit off. I guess in a way they could work as like closers, but then it would just be weird because the ghost is such a perfect ending. And don't get me wrong, I like 6 out of the 11 tracks on here, but the track listing just feels all over the place. It feels like somewhere here is a great trip through Charlie's emotions. And then Kevin from The Office was the one in charge of carrying it on its way to release. It makes me think of, like, Bricky's whole an intern was carrying the only copy of The Last of Us Part Two screenplay during a power surge and then accidentally dropped in, scrambled to put it back together, and ended up putting it together wrong and it got sent out that way. Only the screenplay is just individual note cards with the track names on them. So overall, I'm pulling the old YMS and giving this album a 6 out of 10. Maybe a 6.5 on a good day. I would give it a 7 if it had a more consistent track listing. But unfortunately, it does not. Speaking on the track listing, I'd probably rank from least favorite to favorite going... Oh boy. Good morning. Mainly because it makes me feel absolutely nothing. Uh, then in the Mouth of Madness, which the only sole reason why it's above Good Morning is because at least the verse and bridge is somewhat entertaining to me. There are just in general more elements I like from Mouth of Madness than I do Good Morning. And then after that it goes Little Tim McGraw, The Outsider, Save Me For Myself, Kingdom, Take It For Me, Can't Break Me Down, Pray For Me, The Ghost, and finally, my favorite song in the album, My Own Worst Enemy. And that's about it. It's a little disappointing that a Charlie solo album didn't come out being an 8 or a 9, but I did get a decent amount of songs that I like from it. And now all we have left is just the next Hollywood Undead album.
opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already.